Good evening, brethren, sisters. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3, please. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 9 in Luke chapter 3 to start. Luke chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 9, beginning at verse 1. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Ituria, and of the region of Trachontis, and Lysianus, the tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priests, the word of God came unto John the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. <clears throat> and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. <clears throat> As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude of multitude that came forth to be baptized of him. This is John speaking, by the way. O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. <coughs> Beg your pardon. And now also the axe is laid onto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Look at verse 8. Look at verse, verse 8. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verses 12 under verse 47. John chapter 8, verses 12 on to verse 47. <clears throat> Can you handle this? Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. 
And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. <clears throat> it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. That is because Jesus Christ is the father. Let's continue. <coughs> These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself, because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come? Note this, of course. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am... From above, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. I am he, unless you believe that Jesus Christ is God. The Father, all God, completely God, not one of three, no, God, manifest in the flesh. You shall die in your sins. Verse 19, Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. Verse 24, I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Very quickly, very quick reference to John 15, John, uh, excuse me, John 14, verses 8 and 9. Philip saith unto him, Lord, Show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Go back to John 8. Continuing from verse 24 on. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? Isn't it interesting? He just told them. <clears throat> and Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. Oh, beg your pardon. And that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. <clears throat> and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake, now look at this. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Many believed on him. <clears throat> then said Jesus to those Jews, to those Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, 
Then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Who is the truth? What is the truth? John 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto them, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. <clears throat> Verse 33 from John 8 and on. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant, not slave, servant of sin, because the devil ain't pointing a gun at your head making you to do anything. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. <clears throat> if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Very quickly, note the way he is speaking to these people after verse 30. Many, many Jew and many, many believed on him. And look at how he's speaking to these people. <clears throat> Let's continue from verse 39 on. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If. Ye were of Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. <clears throat> ye do the deeds of your father. They, they, then, said they, then said they to him, beg your pardon, we be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. <laughs> well, the Father is standing right in front of them. Isn't that something? <clears throat> Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. 
Abraham's seed. Abraham's children, huh? Say now of yourselves that you are Abraham's uh, seed. And yet, these were the, uh, these were Abraham's seed. They were said <clears throat> in verse 33, we be Abraham's seed. And in verse 39, they say, Abraham is our father. But yet God the Father was right in front of them, and they didn't know him, and they would have nothing to do with him. <clears throat> First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 1 unto verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 unto verse 11. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas, there, for whereas there is among you envying, and strife, and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For, one, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive of his own reward, shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is... Jesus Christ. And you can couple that with Isaiah chapter 28, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 4. One second, brethren. Sorry about that. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. And also you can reference that with Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verses 42 on to verse 46. Matthew chapter 21, verses 42 on to verse 46. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same as become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, 
it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and the Pharisees had heard this par his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. <clears throat> Look at that, uh, verse 44. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. Brokenness. Brokenness. Fall on your knees. Fall on the stone. You will be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And remember what we read in John 8? In John chapter 8? Verse 43, why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? And in verse 47, he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. And if you were to continue reading towards the very end, and these were, he was speaking unto those Jews who believed on him. But yet, after it was all said and done in this chapter, they took up stones to kill him. Didn't they? Abraham's seed. Abraham's seed. Go to Galatians now. Go on to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 6 to the close of the chapter. <clears throat> Abraham's seed for today. For today. In this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. There are those that are Abraham's seed being of the Jew. Galatians chapter 3, verse 6, on to the close of the chapter. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. <coughs> and the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are the works of the law are for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being, in, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. <clears throat> Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. And now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. 
Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. <clears throat> now a mediator may... Eh, I'll get it out. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before our faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. <clears throat> Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now this is today. This is doctrine specifically for us today in the time of the Gentiles. This is referring to our eternity. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Now are there not Jews and Greeks culturally? Yes. Yes. Are there not Jews and Greek, Greeks ethnically? Yes. Yes, there are. <coughs> there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male or female, no matter how many people try to change their whatever. Okay? For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What makes Abraham's seed? Those who are Christ's. Today, we are Abraham's seed through faith on Jesus Christ. Culturally, ethnically, there are Jews and Greeks. Yes, there are. Eternally, eternally, there is no Jew or Greek, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. For today, in this dispensation. Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 26 on to verse 32. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verses 26 on to verse 32. Ah, uh, no, excuse me, we got to read verse 25. Now, watch this. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, the body, the people, and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he may present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. We are the bride of Christ, remember? The church of the living God, the body of Christ, is the bride of Christ, remember? For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, 
But I speak concerning Christ and the church. The church. The body. The people. Not the buildings. Okay? Abraham's seed for today. Now go back to Luke chapter 3. <clears throat> and let's look at verse 9. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Go to Acts. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. <coughs> Verses 44 under verse 52. Acts chapter 13, verses 44 on to verse 52. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by, which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the uh, stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came on to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. See, what was going on in, in the book of Acts, the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom, the gospel had to first primarily, specifically be offered onto the Jewish people. Okay? That's why there were so many differences in what Peter was saying. Okay? But until Acts chapter 7, that is when the nation of Israel officially rejected the kingdom of God spiritual kingdom, the gospel, okay? And then, hence it came on to us Gentiles, all right? And plus, Paul, throughout his ministry, would do exactly that. What would he do exactly? Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. To the Jew first. Paul was the apostle unto us, the Gentile. Absolutely. As Peter was the apostle for the Jews. Okay? We get that, right? But it was to the Jew first. And when you read the book of um, Acts, you see Paul adhered himself to that principle, going to the Jew first, even though we, the Gentile, were brought in. And verse 17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay? But now, go to Romans chapter 11. 
Romans chapter 11. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verses 1 under verse 32. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. See, there's the danger of of replacement theology. See, the gospel came on to us, the Gentile. But for uh, these people to think that God is totally done with the Jewish people, like that Stephen Anderson guy does, okay? No, no. The Jew is still the apple of God's eye. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> What ye know, watch ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men, who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal, even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it, it, then is it no more grace. Otherwise work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it, the election being those who are in Christ, okay? The election is Christ, okay? Get it? Let's continue. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. As it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall... Salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. The stones, <clears throat> the stones, we were brought in to make them jealous. And if you've ever had any experience at all witnessing onto any of the Jewish people, you've experienced that jealousy, if you have. Let's continue. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke them to emulation, if by any means I may provoke to emula emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? <laughs> For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. 
Remember how we read in Luke chapter 9 and Luke chapter 3 verse 9 about the axe is laid to the root? <clears throat> and if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. We, the Gentile, are grafted into their tree. Okay? Eternally, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Culturally and ethnically, there certainly is. Eternally, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Let's continue. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. <laughs> they, uh, God loved you so much, right? <laughs> that you were worth it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's continue. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Right here. For if God spared not the natural branches, the Jews, take heed lest he spare not thee. <clears throat> Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, the Jews, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. A very good sign that you're dealing with someone who is a false convert or a Jesuit coadjutor is how they feel about the Jewish people. You know? It's a very, very telling sign. Let's continue. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which, by the nat which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Are without repentance. The Jews will always be the apple of God's eye. Always. The whole world revolves around Israel, Jerusalem, and the apple of God's eye to this day still is the Jew. We were brought in to their tree to make them jealous. So we, the Gentile, the, the branches that were not natural, were grafted in to that olive tree to make them jealous. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. See, because also think of this, brethren. If the Jews would have received Christ, would have accepted that, hey, here's God our Father, bringing us 
offering us the millennial kingdom. Here's our king. They would have believed on their king. It would have probably ended right there. But of course it was prophesied that it was not going to be like that. But see what I'm saying? Let's continue. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. <clears throat> For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. What is he talking about? What's this mystery? Hmm. What's this mystery? Go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 7. Ephesians 3, verses 1 under verse 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit. And the Lord is that Spirit. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. What is this talking about? Dispensational truth, dispensations. Okay? He's to, we're making reference to rightly dividing the word of truth. A different dispensation. This dispensation is the time of the Gentiles. There are seven dispensations, okay? And in this dispensation, there is neither Jew nor Greek eternally, okay? It is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile, by the way, okay? The mystery is that the Gentiles have been brought in. This dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. You get it? That's what he's talking about. The whole, the whole book is for me, but it's not all written to me. Remember? Now go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 1 verses 25 on to verse 29 whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God <clears throat> even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. The mystery is that we have been brought in to the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. That is the mystery. And it wasn't revealed to those of different dispensations. It was made, I was in the scriptures, it was prophesied that it was going to do so. But as we saw in the book of John, they didn't believe that many, many believed on him.
But when the Lord Jesus Christ pressed those people, we saw how deep their belief was. And they were the seed of Abraham. They were the seed of Abraham, weren't they? Go to now to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which ye are. Ye are sealed until the day of redemption. And you have the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, dwelling within you. Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapter 2. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 10. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow, by the, grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. Ye also, as lively stone, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. <clears throat> Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now, but now have obtained mercy. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Come on, fingers. First Chronicles chapter 22. First Chronicles chapter 22. Verses 1 and 2. First Chronicles chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God. And this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel. And he sent masons to hew wrought stones to build the house of God. Wrought stones. Wrought stones. Isaiah chapter 9, while, we're, while we are here. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 on to verse 10. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 on to verse 10. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. 
They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warriors with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Capital W Wonderful, Capital C Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Capital F Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it, and to establish it with judgment, and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And the Lord sent word unto Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel, and all people shall know, even Ephraim, and the inhabitant of Samaria, that saying the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. And while we are here, Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, verses 1 on to verse 23. Isaiah 49, verses 1 on to verse 23. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me, and said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. And now, saith the Lord, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. <clears throat> Though Israel be not gathered, Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man hath the, to him whom man despise despiseth to him whom the nation abhorreth hello <laughs> yeah to a servant of rulers kings shall see and arise princes also shall worship because of the lord that is faithful and the holy one of israel and he shall choose thee thus saith the lord in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth, to them that are in darkness, shew yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them, for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them, 
and I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinim. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all, as with an ornament, and bind them on thee as a bride doth. <coughs> For thy waste and thy desolate places, and the land of thy destruction, shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants. And they that swallowed thee up shall be far away. The children which thou shalt have after thou hast lost the other shall say again in thine ears, The place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who hath begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate and captive, and removing to and fro? And who hath brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? <laughs> <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders, and kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward unhungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus was hungry. Fasting, obviously. Here comes the devil. Take these stones and make them bread. And what did he answer him? But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. With that, Mark chapter 7. Hold on. Mark chapter 7. Wait, wait for it. Mark chapter 7, verses 24 on to verse 30. Okay? Mark chapter 7, verses 24 on to verse 30. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into an house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. 
For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophesian by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto dogs. Cast it unto dogs. Let the children first be filled. See, Satan's temptation of the bread, the stones in the bread, and he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God. Scripture had to be fulfilled. And here's Satan tempting to make the stones bread to do it out of order. You see? You see that? There's far more to that temptation than meets the eye. Let the children first be filled. For it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it onto the dogs. And yes, yes, our Lord referred to us as unto dogs. Hey, woof. <laughs> and she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. How about that? How about that? Now, Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Psalm 102, verses 12 under verse 22. Psalm 102, 12 under verse 22. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall hear, shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven did the Lord behold the earth. To hear the groaning of the prisoner, to lose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem, when the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Come on, fingers work with me. Luke chapter 19, verses 1, on to verse 40. Luke chapter 19, verses 1, on to verse 40. Beg your pardon, brethren, one second. Luke chapter 19, verses 1, on to verse 40. 
And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. And he said, therefore, A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him, and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou over... Be thou also over five cities. Another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow? Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that he hath, shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Hold thy, pla uh, hold thy place <laughs> there. Luke chapter 3. Verses 8 and 9 again. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Go back to Luke chapter 19. 
<clears throat> Picking up from verse 28 on to verse 40. And when he had thus spoken, he went before, ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. Lose him, and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, Why do ye lose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way, and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were losing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why lose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that, if these stones hold their peace, if these, excuse me, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Let me reread that again. And he answered and said unto him, I tell you that, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And isn't it interesting, going back to Romans chapter 11, okay, Romans chapter 11, Romans chapter 11, Verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And verse 28, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. And you got to remember too, brethren, stoning was also a sign of judgment. It's also a punishment, I should say. Excuse me. Okay? We, being brought into the tree of the Jews, we, the Gentile, verse 11, in Romans 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. They ethnically and culturally, okay, were descendant of Abraham. But that generation that rejected the Lord, that rejected the millennial kingdom and rejected the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, the gospel. Okay? That generation, they were descended from Abraham. But a majority of them were not of the seed of Abraham. And hence, after Acts chapter 7, we were brought in. Okay? It was already the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation. Okay? In the book of Acts, this was it was already this dispensation, but it had to go to the Jew first, then come to us to make them jealous. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. 
Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 18. If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Today, a majority of the Jews are into the Kabbalah. They follow the Talmud. Okay? Israel today is not a nation of Christ. They soon will be. Because the Jew is the apple of God's eye. That's the time of Jacob's trouble. Seven years, God pouring his wrath upon the earth. And the Jews in that time eventually will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, God their Father, and be saved. And then we come back down with the Lord into the Millennial Kingdom. But the other gods and many false prophets over there. Let's continue. Verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out to the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is in thine own, which is as thine own soul, excuse me, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shalt thine eye pity, neither shalt, thou, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hand of all the people, and thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, to provoke them to jealousy. <clears throat> and all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. It is a shame, it is truly a shame that the nation of Israel is going to have to go through the time of Jacob's trouble to finally break them and get their attention again. But this time, during the time of Jacob's trouble, they will turn to the Lord. Many of them are going to die. Yes, many are going to die during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why it's very imperative that you get saved right now, today, before it's too late. Continuing, if thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities, 
which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell there, saying, Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their cities, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known. Then shalt thou inquire and make search, and ask diligently, and behold, if it be truth, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought among you, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and the cattle thereof, with the edge of the sword. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof, and shalt burn with fire the city, and all the spoil thereof, every whit. For the Lord thy God, and it shall be in heap forever, it shall, not, it shall not be built again. And there shall cleave not of the accursed thing to thine hand, that the Lord may turn from that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger, and shew thee mercy, and have compassion upon thee, and multiply thee, as he has sworn unto thy fathers. When thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep all his commandments, which I command thee this day, to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. <clears throat> we are lively stones today, brethren, sisters. And stones, once they are cast, can do a lot of damage, can't they? But stones can also be polished to shine very brightly. And with what is coming very quickly on the horizon, Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I have a second part to this video, which um, is going to, which I'm going to, I'm going to take a little break here and chill for a bit, and then uh, get this other video um, going. Um, thank you on to the brother who um, provided me the notes uh, for a majority of this. Thank you, brother. Um, I just hope that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. That's all I care about. And if you have been following me along in the scriptures, and you are of the Church of the Living God, hopefully the Lord spake to you through the scriptures that we looked at today thus far. Thank you so much for watching if you do.